Well, they're meant to keep you safe during severe weather, but for years, cities across the state have debated getting rid of aging tornado sirens. The I-Team's Casey Geraldo joins us to explain why some areas have silenced the sirens and what happens when severe weather now hits. Casey. George and Carol, sirens are part of critical public safety plans in some towns, but they don't exist in others. I traveled across the state to find out how cities that have silenced their sirens are now protecting their residents. They're the terrifying moments as a devastating tornado rolled through Chatech, Wisconsin. That's scary as right there. <laughs> I thought we were gonna die. Just a rumble, it sounded like a train. With them, a noise many are all too familiar with. This tornado siren's still up here in Antigo, but people won't be hearing it anymore. The city's moved on to newer technology. Antigo is the only town we found in Wisconsin no longer using sirens. Do you think that sirens are outdated for 2017? I think they still serve a vital role, uh, but we're looking towards the future. The city's director of administrative services tells me they started using this website that allows residents to sign up for weather alerts. All 20,000 residents in the county have now access to it if they so choose. To get new sirens would have cost up to $65,000. For the online system, the city and county split a $5,000 setup fee and an ongoing almost $7,500 each year in annual maintenance. They're still a major part of the warning system for many towns, cities, counties all across the state. Todd Pritchard with Wisconsin Emergency Management says tornado sirens can be critical, but they also have limitations. He tells me you can only hear tornado sirens within a certain area and wind can change where the sound reaches. They can be hard to hear inside or even when you're sleeping. And sirens tell you something bad is happening, but can't tell you what or where the danger is. He adds many sirens first went up in the 1940s at the start of the Cold War. Those we researched hadn't been replaced since the 1980s. The high cost of maintaining and repairing this aging technology can be a strain on city budgets. Obviously it comes down to dollars, dollars and cents. Port Washington Administrator Mark Graham says his city also debated replacing sirens. Yes, a lot of people obviously do carry cell phones. Still, Port Washington spent about $22,000 repairing one siren. Grams tells me Port Washington gets a lot of visitors over the summer, and sending quick warnings is vital, even if new sirens will cost the city at least another $50,000. When we go through the budget process, we will take a look at all that. A choice every local community gets to make, since the state has no role in regulating sirens. I don't think you can have enough ways to warn people. And one warning could save a life. One concern many have with Antigo's system without sirens is people who don't sign up to be part of the alert system and people who don't have cell phones to get the alerts. The city tells us they've offered free weather radios like this one to, for people who may need it. Okay, so whichever warning people hear, what should they do? Most importantly, believe it. A study after a tornado killed hundreds in Joplin, Missouri, found people needed more than five warnings before they took shelter. Wisconsin's emergency management says people need to first take that shelter, then look for more information because they may only have a minute until danger hits. Yeah, waiting could actually cost you your life, so exactly. that's important information. Thank you, Casey. Thanks, Casey.